Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are looking at a really cool, uh, I guess we could call this a game engine and a game editor, uh, it's kind of everything, a full stack here all uh, together under the banner WebGL Studio and this one is, uh, as you may guess, entirely browser based but for those of you out there do not get turned off by that. This is a remarkably capable game engine and you're going to be shocked at just how powerful the editor is. All right, here you can see one of the simple examples actually created with it. This is running in my browser. Um, it's it's beautiful. Like it's, it's got good lighting, uh, good effects, um, all that stuff going on. And this was ultimately created uh, using the tools that we're looking at today, WebGL Studio. So uh, if you're interested, it is available at webglstudio.org. I'm gonna exit out of that demo and we are going to jump straight into WebGL Studio. So here you can see uh, we are running in demo mode. You can go ahead and create an account and save things that way, or you can just log into the demo account or the guest account, which is what I've done here. You see here is an example that we've opened up. You can tab through the main interface over here. So you got the scene view, drive view, player view. So if there was actually some software involved, it would be running, but as you can see, um, good rendering quality. We'll go back here to scene view. You can see the effects going on here. Ooh, it's really sensitive, but uh, we've got an on-screen uh, special effect going on, and we've got rendering going on with nice lighting and surfacing, etc. So that was it. We got the drive where you can store things. You've got the, uh, the player here. Uh, here's where you can type your code. There's an entire game engine behind this guy. Uh, we got the graph. This guy can be used to do visual scripts. So if you want, for example, I can come down here. We create a new one. Like so, attached to the root node in this particular case, and you'll see here we have a scene node. We can pick inputs and outputs to handle from that. So for example, let's drop the mesh out. And over here, we can add another node. So we can do things like, I don't know, uh, I didn't really put a lot of thought into this part. Uh, say, scene, uh, I don't know, component. And then we drop things out of here and so on. So you got your typical uh, visual scripting language available right here. Uh, we create scene nodes, we can create nodes, we can create groups of nodes. We've got logic in here somewhere, your basic stuff over here. So you see here uh, casting or printing out something to the console. So if we wanted to, we could call it to a script, etc. So we got a full visual scripting language build here. Uh, got some debugging tools going on here under the GPU. So you can see here textures, meshes and materials while you're there. And then we've got shaders, full shader property. You can see a preview down here and you can actually edit directly in um, GLSL shaders that you've got going on. So this is your straightforward navigation here. Uh, this is where you compose your 3D world. You'll notice here, uh, we've got the root node and then we got node in it right here. Node is built up of components. So you can see here, there's a material component, a transform component and a mesh render component. We could go ahead and add another component if we wish. And you can see here, there are a ton of different kinds of components that you can uh, parent to something. So even Sprite and Sprite Atlases are available there. So it is a very uh, comprehensive list of components that can be added to scene nodes. Now the next question would be, okay, what about bringing your own assets in? It actually does a very good job of that. So let's start a new project here. All right, so creating a guest project here. And now what I can do is I could come up here, go actions, and we can do um, import, so or import files right here. By the way, there's also a plugin system here uh, that we can go here, plugins. And you'll notice here one of the plugins, for example, is F F um, FBX importer support. So if we wanted to go ahead and add that in, we could do so there. And now we could also bring in FBX files. So this is an extensible editor as well. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead, import a file. So now I need to actually find something. So let's go over and fire up you. All right, so here we go. I fired him up a couple times. I got something in my downloads folder, walking, uh, let's see, date modified, come on, walking, all right, walking, all right, that should be the D-A-E, yeah, so there's the Collada format by default, so let's go ahead, we'll drag and drop that in, so we're going to import and add it to the scene, now there is going to be a bit of a catch, you can see here, it ain't textured, but that's pretty easy to fix, we go back again to actions, import files, and then what we can do is go back here, grab the three texture files, and you drop them all in at once. So import and insert in scene. Then we grab our guy. So there is the mesh that we are dealing with. You'll see over here, there's the standard material. See editor, unlock the material. All right, here we go. So there is our guy, and we just map it to the texture. So we got here, oh, I don't want the normal, where's my other texture? Hmm, let me try that again. So for some reason I only had the one texture there. So close actions, import files. Let's make sure that 
It's the diffuse I really want, so let's get it in there and import. All right, there you go. So there it automatically came in. So I don't know why that didn't work out originally. So now let's just go ahead and set up the normal map on that. It's right here, click it, select our texture, add the normal map, and close. All right, so there we go. We now have a textured, animated object imported DAE or Collada format. Uh, that worked out pretty well. And then go ahead, we can see, boom, there we go. We got some, uh, some stuff going on there. So that's actually quite cool. You'll notice down here also, we've got a number of different uh, values here. So for example, position. What I can actually do is select position and drop down here. And now you see we're in the uh, uh, keyframing or the timeline tool here. So I could go ahead and go add a keyframe. It's right there. And then let's say right here, I'm gonna go ahead and add another keyframe. So we got, all right, I didn't select it. Okay, let's move that back. Uh, select here, go ahead. Add the second keyframe, open that up. Let's change some values here. So let's do this as 12 and 12. Okay, enter, that should be good. All right, so now over our timeline, we should move. All right, so maybe I'm not doing a great job of it here. Hmm, I did something wrong. Uh, probably, oh, I need to probably grab it from the root to do that stuff. Anyways, you can see here, you can keyframe over time, pretty much any value you wish. Um, so you, you can do kind of neat animations, etc. cetera, built in out of the box. Uh, we have our resources here. This is all logged into the server account. You can actually create your own account. You've also got access to public items on occasion. And as you come in here the first time, you're actually gonna notice down here, we've got a couple of uh, examples to go from. So if you wanna check things out, you can. You should want to exit your scene, yes. So what we haven't shown right now is, is the scripting. There's actually a full JavaScript language behind this guy. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that now. Oh, it's actually in another tab. So I'm gonna go back here. And now you see we've got, uh, this is our editor. Oh, we're done with the editor for now. And now we're on to the Kodi side of things. So you see here, uh, it's an open source 3D graphics editor in the browser with a scene editor, coding pad, graph editor, a virtual file system, and more. It is under the MIT license. Uh, and here we got a bit of a, a high level overview. It's an open source browser based 3D graphics suite. Uh, you can edit scenes and materials, design effects and shaders, code behaviors and share your work all within the browser using standard web technologies. Uh, some important features include a full 3D graphics engine, Light Scene JS, that supports multiple light shadow maps, real time reflections, custom materials, post effects, skinning animations and more. An easily extended component based system for controlling the rendering pipeline and in, in, um, interaction event hooks or uh, and easy to use, what you see is what you get editor that provides a single interface for all code graph, comp, um, graph compositing and timeline features, a graph editor for controlling behavior, shaders and post-processing effect using light graph. Uh, we've got support for light file system, JS, uh, virtual file system, allowing drag and drop. We saw that in action for importing things and export your work by sending a single link if you so wish. So you can see a couple, couple things are missing. FBX is there, but it's experimental. They need to add physics and mesh editing. There's actually texture painting that's built in there out of the box, but now you may have noticed there's all these kind of dependencies. Well, those are all actually part of the same project. So we got here WebGL Studio, that is the full editor we just saw in action, but they've also got their own library that could be used separately. So this is Light Graph, a node engine and editor. Uh, so this was when we saw the visual scripting stuff. This is the library that powers that. Then we've got Light Scene. This is the WebGL 3D engine and behind all of this. WebGL Studio actually uses Light Scene. So if you wanted to take something from this and and make your own game engine out of it. You could build over top of light scene that would give you your scene graph and that kind of stuff. Uh, then we have lightgl.js, which is a lightweight JavaScript WebGL library for handling contexts. Uh, mesh texture shaders relies on GL Matrix 2.0, very easy to use. And then we got light GUI, a JavaScript library to create web apps with desktop look alike interfaces. All the widgets are created using JavaScript instead of HTML. So you see all of these things go together. This is basically your the basis of your game engine. This is the graphing system built on top. This is the low level interface between WebGL. And then this is a GUI library of which all are consumed by WebGL Studio to give you what we saw in action earlier. So this is WebGL Studio. If you're interested in learning more is available at web uh, webglstudio.org. Again, the code is up on GitHub. Uh, you, you're going to want to go back to the parent repository to find all of these other uh, dependencies, but they're, you don't need them to, to use Lightgraph. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, uh, WebGL Studio yourself, but if you want to grab them. The cool thing is all of the dependent pieces are also under the MIT code license. And the MIT code license is quite a liberal one. So uh, if you want to come in, check it out, basically just head on over to WebGL Studio, do try WebGL Studio, it will load up, it loads 
pretty quick. So you can see here, uh, I connected as guest. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and get more than just the guest access, you're gonna want to come in here. You could, well, I guess you could just do this way. So I'll log out and you'll notice the first time you try to access something like the drive, go to the server, it's gonna say, you must be logged in. You can go here to log in. So you could specify, you can sign up and create your own account if you want to persist your data. Uh, again, I just keep using guest and uh, yeah, so jump in, you look here, you're gonna see a couple projects you can check out, some examples here, and then some examples that people in the community seem to currently be working on. And they're all in various different categories of failingness, by the way. So, uh, but if you are interested in checking it out, there's also, um, uh, there's actually quite a bit here to learn from. It, it's it's interesting to see. The only thing that I really find missing, to be honest, is documentation for the editor itself. You come in here, uh, there's a lot of menu options. And see things are like this kind of stuff. Well, those expand out to other menus. So um, there is there's quite a bit here, and, and quite a bit of it isn't quite documented. So uh, the tool side of things, it, it's not incredibly documented, but um, the, the the underlying libraries are so um yeah that that's what you've got to go with the nice thing is it is responsive it does actually you hit that f11 key uh and this does feel quite a bit like working with a native application i've got to say so um it's it's interesting for sure Ooh, there's my start menu uh so yeah but uh, it's definitely worth checking out. It's really capable and powerful, and I'm shocked at just how uh, mature and capable these tools actually are. So uh, that's WebGL Studio. Uh, let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.